my name is Ellie Dashwood and today we'll be talking about my trip to Pemberley. Ooh. I know a lot of you probably love Pride and Prejudice, which is probably why you subscribe to this channel about classic literature and period dramas. And so you've probably seen the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice with Kira Knightley, where she goes and sees Pemberley. And it's just absolutely incredible looking. And this is, of course, the same house that plays Pemberley in Death Comes to Pemberley. And you can go check that out. I believe it is still up on Netflix. But have you ever wondered who plays Pemberley? Like, what cast member is this magnificent house? What is that cast member's real name? And it is Chatsworth House. It is actually the home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. You can go and tour it. And that's what I did and that's what I'm going to be telling you about here today. So first of all, it's absolutely gorgeous. And we're talking rolling green hills filled with little sheep. We went in May, my friends Kelsey and Rachel and I, all the sheep had just had babies and so there were the cutest little lambs running everywhere. After you drive through these like beautiful winding little old roads going past all these beautiful trees and hillsides and little filled with sheep, you finally get up to Chatsworth House and it is absolutely spectacular looking. It looks like it does in movies. I mean, it's just amazing. I knew that we were going to go be touring Chatsworth when we were in England. So I sort of made a bonnet and I wore like an empire waisted like maxi dress because that's about as authentic as I get. But when you first walk into the house, you like pay for your tickets and you go up and pretty soon you find yourself in that foyer that you see in Pride and Prejudice that has the black and white tile and the big staircase that goes up. And when I was visiting Chatsworth House, they had a special um, sort of show going on throughout the whole house of like fashion throughout the era. And so they had a lot of old clothing from the Devonshire family all over the place. And so that was really interesting to look at. And you've got to walk through all the rooms and you've got to see all the little displays and just, it is amazing. It's, I don't know how people can actually live there because it is like living in this amazing looking museum. One thing I was kind of disappointed about is they keep all the windows shut and even the ones that are open, like for light wise, have like these screens over them. So everything's very, very dark inside, which I know that really helps preserve old things better. But at the same time, one thing you see a lot in the Pride and Prejudice of 2005 is like a lot of natural light everywhere. And they probably also brought in artificial light for the movie. But I feel like if they just opened those windows, it would be so much prettier in there, but it's still so gorgeous. So you go through the entire house and you also get to go through the part where they have all the statues from the movie and those are all really there and one of those statues is i believe it's called like the veiled virgin or something and it's the one you see in the movie and she goes up to her and there's just like this like cloth over her face now it looks when i first saw that in the movie i thought like okay that has to be plaster there's no way you can get that detail where you can see the girl's face through the marble in real life, but no, that is a real marble statue. It was actually commissioned by the sixth Duke of Devonshire, who was known as the Bachelor Duke, and he was actually the Duke when Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice. And I know this because they have the Vestal Virgin like right on the small hallway that leads from the library section of Chatsworth into the gallery of all the statues. And so I like come around that corner and I like see it and I'm like, that's the statue from the movie. And this older man who's standing there, because throughout the house they have, you know, people who can tell you more about the house, are also probably there to watch you and make sure you're not like, I don't know, graffitiing stuff. I don't know. But anyway, one of the guys who works there, he's this older man, it's like, yes, it is. You're talking about Pride and Prejudice, right? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like thinking, yeah, of course I am. I'm wearing a bonnet. Anyway, he comes and he tells us all about the statue and how it's a real marble statue and how the artist who did it would lock himself away when he would do statues and sculpture so no one knows this technique of how he got that veil that way. And all these years later, we still don't know how he did it because he never shared that. And I just find that so fascinating. It's absolutely gorgeous. I would definitely suggest making sure you have time to look at all those, all the statues in the area. Once again, that area is super dark versus in the movie where it's filled with beautiful light. So if you Chatsworth people, you ever see this, 
open the windows, it would be so pretty. I also, the older man who worked there was also trying to convince me that the sixth Duke of Devonshire is who Jane Austen based Mr. Darcy off of. He was a bachelor duke, he had a mistress and stuff, but he never married. He was very much into gardening and horticulturalism, and that's one of the reasons they have such absolutely gorgeous grounds. Anyway, I should put a picture of him somewhere. Here you go. This is him. Do you think this is a good Darcy? I don't know. I would have to meet him to really decide like, if I'm okay with thinking that this is the guy who inspired Mr. Darcy. So once you go through the whole house tour, it leads you straight into the gift shop where they do have the bust of Matthew McFadden as Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, the movie, the one that you see in the movie, in the gift shop, you can look at. I did not take a picture of it for some reason because I'm just not very smart. Like, I, the whole time I thought, I'm gonna do this, but then once I got into the gift shop, I was like a kid in the candy store and I just started looking at all the stuff. And they do have some really great stuff there. I absolutely love their gift shop. And their gift shop has the most natural light of this entire experience, probably because they're not worried about the $5 magnets, you know, dying versus the hundreds of years old sculptures. And then, so after we did that tour, we went out into the grounds. Now, the grounds at Chatsworth are just super extensive and I would really suggest you give yourself a lot of time. By the time we got out in the grounds we only had like an hour or something and so we started going around the grounds and it was so gorgeous. They have like this old miners tunnel thing you can walk through, they have waterfalls, they have this hedge maze and it just goes on and on. They have the area where they have that fountain you see in all the movies that Chatsworth is in and it it was absolutely gorgeous out there and everything was in bloom when I was there because it was about mid-May when we went. This is the part where the story gets somewhat more interesting because at this point we've done the house tour and we're out in the gardens and we get to the center of the hedge maze and we're so happy. We're like, now this is one thing I'm going to talk about in another video I'm going to make about surprising things about my trip to UK but is everything closes really early there. In the United States even like the little store down the street stays open until 9 p.m. but in the UK they're like let's close everything super early so Pemberley closes at like 5 30 and if I keep calling Chatsworth Pemberley just know I'm talking about Chatsworth you have it closing at 5 30 and so by the time we make our way back out of the hedge maze we're like looking at our phones and we realize that it is 5 30 already or like 5 35 and we're like oh wow we better start heading towards the parking lot but the thing is is we're like all the way out in the gardens so we have to walk back towards the house towards the gate that lets us out to the parking lot. As we get there we realize everyone else has already left and then when we get to the gate we realize it's locked. We're like locked in Pemberley and I'm just like oh actually this is kind of cool I'm locked in Pemberley but like my friends they start freaking out. I don't know maybe as Americans we just watch too many episodes of Locked Up Abroad but they're both like no they're gonna arrest us. So we find this nice older lady who works at the gift shop and she's one of the only people left there. We tell her hey we got locked in is there any way we can get out we're super sorry and she's like oh yeah sure don't worry about it I'll just call security and they'll open the gate for you and so my friends start to relax it's like okay they seem really nice and understanding this probably happens often we're all gonna be fine they're gonna open the gate and we can go to our car and so she calls security she gets off the phone with them she turns to my friend and is like oh well we're just gonna have to wait for the duke and duchess to come and then we can let you out and my friend like starts freaking out she's like no no, no, don't bother the Duke and Duchess. We'll be fine. We can jump over the wall. And it's like this like giant brick eight foot drop on the other side of the wall, by the way. But that's like how freaked out my friend was because she's just like, no, they're gonna bother the Duke and Duchess. What do you say? I'm just over here like, we're gonna be the Duke and Duchess. This is the most exciting thing ever. But then the old lady is like trying to like calm my friend down. It's just like, no, no, it's fine. The Duke and Duchess, they're just coming in in their private helicopter and all the security team has gone to meet them. So wait there at the helipad until they can escort the Duke and Duchess back to the house and then they can open the gate because none of us have keys. And my friend's like, okay, okay. We're waiting there at the locked gate and we're all like looking for the helicopter in the sky. And I'm just like super excited. My friends are kind of still nervous. But then the saddest thing in the world happened. The lone security guard who happened to somewhere be on this giant estate came walking up and let us out. I know, it was so anticlimactic. 
because it says like we were gonna be the Duke and Duchess and then the security guard shows up and opens the gate so I had to be like okay I'm not gonna be the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire it's probably for the best they probably don't like finding random American girls locked in their garden but still it was an exciting moment where I almost met them and so we go and we get in the car and we start driving away and as we do we see their helicopter coming in overhead so technically I saw the helicopter of the Duke and Duchess I was quite excited about that and so as we drive away and we see the helicopter go and we're like almost out of like the sort of the driveway of Chatsworth house and we stop because they're a really cute like little sheep so this is a really big problem why we're gonna get locked up abroad is not because we get locked in people's gardens it's because of what I did next which is there's all these signs that are like do not worry the sheep I worried the sheep I got out of the car and I was chasing the sheep because I wanted to pet them but they all ran away from me and then they like run away from me and then they look back at me with this like the what are you doing girl you're weird why are you chasing me I'm a cute sheep but I wanted to pet the baby sheep so then I got back in the car and we left Chatsworth and I was like so sad. I was like, Pemberley, why do you leave me? <laughs> so that is the exciting story of how I almost met the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire, how we got locked in Pemberley, and we also got to chase cute sheep. Or in the terms of the signs that were telling us not to do that, I was worrying the sheep, but the sheep did not look worried. The sheep looked mildly irritated and questioning my sanity. That's what the look the sheep had in their eyes. But they were so cute! So hopefully if you ever go to England, you should tour Chatsworth because it's absolutely awesome. Admittedly, make sure you leave before 5.30. Also, do not worry the sheep because the sheep will disapprove of you. And also wear a bonnet because bonnets are really, really cool and you should wear them. And that is the story of my trip to Chatsworth. Now leave in the comments below whether you think this guy is really the inspiration for Mr. Darcy. And make sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Ellie Dashi. Thank you so much again and have a wonderful day.